Well, I, you know, I, I want to go back to your own uh, lessons in management and entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I remember, and this has been, of course, widely spoken about, your three-day uh, trip uh, on a truck, uh, uh, really an immersive experience, so to speak, to see what your clients go through, what your customers go through, and, and, and that has been instructive in building out a much more customer-centric approach across each of your businesses. Do you still do that anymore? Yeah, honestly, Shireen, I would like to do a lot more, more of that. And unfortunately, you know, between all of the different areas of business, I've had less time to do that at this stage. Uh, you know, but I still try to do as much as, uh, as much of that as I can when, when I'm on the road, meet customers, but uh, not, not in any three-day trip since then, right? But still, I think that's a large part of what any senior management team should be doing, right? Because it's, it's, it's integral to the way we need to approach our business. Uh, I, I remember as part of the uh, EVI uh, uh, event in, uh, in India, you spoke about the bottleneck of the bottle always being at the top and hence the need to de-bottleneck. So just to take that forward, what have you been able to change <laughs> or what do you intend to change if you haven't already uh, with, within the organization? Yeah, so Shireen, I would say the organization itself is in a, in a constant state of flux, right? So one of the rules that we really put in is that uh, anything we do at a particular level in an organization, so let's just say I'm doing something, uh, you know, within 18 months I should stop doing it and my direct report should start doing it. I feel like that's the only way we really grow organizational capacity. Uh, and then within 18 months they should stop doing it and then their direct report should start doing it. Uh, that's something that we've been doing fairly successfully. So now with all three businesses, we've got, you know, very strong CEOs basically at the helm of each of the businesses. Um, and then under them, we've really been able to build a lot of talent, right? I would say really developing layers of talent is, is the only way that India can scale at the rate at which it needs to. Uh, and so one of the things we've done is just really develop an organizational construct uh, and continuously keep kind of pushing down what each of us do. Um, and where we identify, and you know, I think we've been good at identifying kind of any of us ourselves being bottlenecks, uh, we've been able to move, right? Just the good thing with growth, obviously, is that it gives us enough flexibility that we can move to other roles in the organization. And so if you see any of us becoming bottlenecks mm. ourselves, then we make a, a very quick shift to another role in the organization. <laughs> that way we make sure that basically we're not, we're not kind of, you know, suppressing any of the energy. Honestly, I believe, Shireen, that most organizations, the, the, you know, like 99% of the energy is generated by the field teams, right? By the people that are out in the field. And, and what middle management and senior management really needs to do is just allow that energy to flow directly versus basically trying to suppress it uh, in, in, in any way, shape or form. Is there a significance of that 18 month period? Why specifically 18 months? <laughs> Uh, I would just think of it as half-life, right? Because basically it takes you at least like four to five months to even learn what's going on. Uh, and so, you know, I think 18 months itself is a compressed time frame, right? The way I look at it is, you know, what I, what I had probably five to six years to learn at Chola, uh, that was compressed down to maybe three years at TI and then, you know, 18 months at CG. So let's see, I mean, if we can compress the cycle even more, we will try to do it. Um, but at this stage, you know, that, that itself puts us on a steep enough learning curve that it basically makes it quite, uh, you know, it makes it quite challenging, right? It makes it quite challenging for everybody. Uh, and that's where, you know, the, the, level of, the, the level of energy that everybody has to bring to the table as a result is, is very, very high. You know, Belan, you spoke about CG and uh, and what you've had to uh, experience over the last 18 months uh, uh, at CG and, and the learning curve that you've been on there. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it has been a turnaround story that uh, everyone has taken note of, including the markets. I want to understand from you, uh, you know, what is what has really been, uh, to your mind, the big attributes uh, that have helped you script that turnaround? And more importantly, as you look ahead, where do you see things for CG over the next few years? Okay, so I'll, I'll get to the first part first, right? Uh, you know, so I think there are three aspects to the turn, turnaround that were fairly significant. First, that it was a great asset to begin with, right? Uh, it, it, it's uh, it basically kind of the, the presence it had in the motor business, in the railway business, the switchgear business, the transformer business uh, was fairly significant. 
Uh, so I think it was a great asset that the country had, but unfortunately kind of went down uh, in terms of performance for all the wrong reasons, right? So the, the first is that we were dealing with a good asset to start with. Uh, the second is, uh, you know, we brought in N. Srinivasan as the MD. Mr. Srinivasan has been instrumental in t turning around that company uh, for two reasons, right? One is because it required uh, a, a large chunk of financial and, and, and legal acumen in combination with uh, operational strength, which is what uh, N. Srinivasan, who goes by NS, really brought to the table. Um, and that's been, that's been incredible because... Uh, you know, I don't think, I mean, honestly, kind of the rate of turnaround kind of, you know, surprised me. I, I did not think we were going to be able to turn, around, turn it around that quickly. Uh, and the third, I, again, I would go back to just the quality of the people. CG, you know, the entire workforce just has kind of great engineering capability, great talent, great strength. Uh, and so, again, when we were able to just get, get their morale up, their motivation up, and just kind of get, get them to perform, um, you know, at uh, the top of their game, we were really able to turn around that, that asset a lot, lot more quickly than, than, than even, honestly, we believe we could. Uh, second, what are the opportunities for CG? I think the, the opportunity for CG right now is fairly immense. Um, you know, the company generates uh, you know, very strong PBTs and, and, and free cash. We've been generating close to 800 crores in free cash. That's almost 100 million free cash a year. So now the real question is how do we deploy that, right? I always think of companies as two engines, right? One is a free cash generation engine. And then second is a capital allocation engine. So now we're really turning towards that capital allocation engine. One of the first deployments has been towards the OSAT. That won't consume all of the capital that, that uh, CG, CG is continuing to generate and spin off. All of the free cash that CG is continuing to generate and spin off. The second aspect, obviously, is growth and expansion and capacity itself. Even after the growth and expansion and capacity, we still wouldn't have consumed all of the capital, uh, you know, because luckily for us, capital expansion in that business uh, is not as intensive. Um, so we are, we're doubling our motor capacity. Mm -hmm. We're going to double both switchgear and transformer. And we're going to increase our, our capacity on the railway side as well. So all four businesses are looking at significantly expanding capacity. Uh, also, along with uh, a new business that we're adding, and that makes is the consumer business. Uh, because a non-compete got over uh, in 2021. So that's, that continues to have a lot of opportunity. Uh, and then one area within motors that we're also looking at fairly seriously is the drives business. Um, also what we're looking at from CG is both okay. the export market um, and the service, service as, a, as a mechanism of income. But beyond that also, I, I still think we will generate more, uh, more cash in the company and we're looking at Again, you know, the best, best uh, ways to allocate that capital as well. Uh, you know, Belen, on the consumer business that you just spoke of, uh, uh, you know, outline for us uh, what uh, we could potentially be looking at uh, in terms of you building that out. And uh, what would the CapEx be across each of these businesses that you just spoke to us about uh, for CG? Yeah, so I think the, the CapEx that's already allocated, we've already outlined in our earnings transcripts and our earnings calls. Uh, but for the consumer business, we basically start with fans and pumps and kind of, you know, the, the more, more general electrical appliance areas and then look at new areas from, for growth beyond that. So for the first couple of years, we'll just be establishing a beachhead in those areas and then we start looking at what, what we can do from a growth perspective. Well, Antibay, it's been an absolute pleasure. We wish you the very best of luck uh, in Monte Carlo as you represent the country at the EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. Good luck to you, and uh, uh, we hope to see you back in India soon. But thanks very much for joining us today and appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Shreen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special from all of us here. For now, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. The news will continue after this short break.